I'm at a warehouse on the outskirts of Gurugram with Albinder Dhinsa and Saurav Kumar, both engineers from IIT who set up Grofers in 2013. This is the first warehouse built three years ago by the online marketplace for groceries and that is significant. It represents their big shift in business strategy from a pure delivery service to an inventory stocking retailer with its own private labels. On Life Etc, we're talking about why and how they've managed this change. How often do you come to your warehouses? Uh, not as often as I would like to. Yeah. Uh, now it's down to almost once a quarter. Okay. Uh, but most of the warehouse operations and the supply chain operations yeah. is actually led by my co-founder Saurabh. Right. And, uh, you can meet him and ask him a lot more questions about what happens in the warehouse. I bet he'll be a lot more knowledgeable than I will be. Okay, uh, alright. So, why don't you meet Saurabh? Please. Hi Saurabh. Hey. And I'll see you guys later. Yeah, okay. We'll catch you in a bit. So Saurabh, I was just told that you're the guy who's at the warehouse more often. Yeah. Uh, why is that and how do you divide what each of you are responsible for? What's the division yeah. of labour like? Um, yeah, so and this is also the fun part and that's why I'm here more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I end up worrying more about the supply side of the business mm -hmm. and the operations mm -hmm. and that's why I end up being more on field than Albi does. And what does he do then? Uh, he looks uh, more after the uh, demand side of the business, right. uh, worrying about uh, customer base, worrying about the technology side of it. Mm. Uh, so he, he, he worries more on the demand side, I worry more on the supply side of the business. You were an IIT Bombay, yeah. uh, I believe he was an IIT Delhi, yeah. you all met as professionals much later. Yeah. What is it when, what makes you connect to take such a big bet with your lives? We worked together for almost three years in the, in the company that we yeah. met uh, and we, we, we were fairly com comfortable with that, okay, we liked each other's, the way we thought about things, mm. the way we used to work. When I was taking that decision that I, I want to move back and start something on my own, mm. uh, Albi was also in a very similar phase and he wanted to do something on his own as well and when, then we decided that why not do it together. Beyond the fact that you all met at the right time and you yeah. had similar goals, yeah. is there anything else that when you get together as yeah. co-founders to yeah. set up a business from scratch, is there anything that you need to look for? Today if there are two youngsters watching you guys, yeah. uh, would you say, okay look for this in a partner? Uh, I, I think uh, for us, it, it, the most important thing was how comfortable we were with each other, hmm. right? Uh, that whatever happens, I, I can just go to LB and discuss anything and yeah. he will have my back. Uh, when I'm struggling with something, he will have my back, hmm. right? Just that, that comfort is the most important thing, that hmm. you know that you are doing it with somebody who, who is also thinking about the same things, he's worrying about the same problems and he will always have your back. Right? Mm. And that's that's, 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 the, uh, that's the most important X thing. factor, if yeah. I could call it that. Savings has become this big proposition that yeah. Grofers offers its customers today as a business and as a brand. Um, give me a sense of your customer, Give me draw, draw up a demographic profile, give me a sense of what is it this woman who shops at Grofers is looking for and where does she come from? The customers that we uh, appeal to, right, uh, we call them motorcycle families. What families? Motorcycle families. Oh. Families who who have a motorcycle in their home yeah. uh, and uh, these are still the two-wheeler family. This is still the two-wheeler family. This is the family for who Ratan Tata very famously wanted the Nano. Nano to come in, right? So th that's the family we go yeah. after, right? This is the family who is more value conscious. Mm. Uh, the woman of the household is looking to save money wherever mm. she can, right? Mm. Uh, when she's, grocery is one of the things that women of the household generally buy in India, right? Uh, this, this is the woman who is looking, can I save? 10 rupees more in my basket and help my family live better, mm. right? Uh, so this is the family that uh, we are going after. They, they are very value conscious. They are, they are definitely aspirational. Mm. Mm. So they are looking for how can I, how can I make my life better, right? How mm. can I save more and make mm. my life mm. better and go after more aspirational things? Mm. Uh, so that's the customer that we are going after, mm. uh, and uh, that, uh, that's the biggest market in India, right? Mm. Like the middle and low income households. Mm. Uh, that's who we believe. Uh, I think this is the customer who is also coming online right now, right? Mm. Uh, they are looking for better opportunities. Yeah. And they're, they're coming online through the phone. They're coming online through the phone and 
we believe that the next 100 million customer mm. that comes online, right, they will be looking for their first purchase in food and groceries yeah. more than fashion yeah. and electronics, yeah. right? So how do you offer the customer savings? It, it is because of the way you buy in bulk and then you pass that on. How does, that, how does yeah. it work? Why does it make more sense for me to buy from Grofers yeah. uh, as opposed to buying from the shop next yeah. to my house? Okay. Given that both of both you have the products product, that I yeah. want. Yeah. See, for us, uh, the whole the business that we are building, right? It it, it relies on the supply chain that we are building, mm. right? Uh, the reason why we are able to bring cheaper products to customers is because mm. we are shortening the supply chain. Okay. For us, the journey that a product makes mm. from a brand's factory yeah. or, or a manufacturer's facility yeah. to consumer, yeah. we if we shorten that, right? Mm. Then we are able to pass on those benefits to customers. What is this handheld device that you've been flashing through the conversation? Uh, this is the picking device for us. Yeah. So when a customer places an order, hmm. this is where the order shows up. They'll go to the location, scan right. the product and start picking So do you order. need any special skills to be an order picker? Uh, we have a two hour training to train people to start doing so the I, So I'm guessing a, a, an engineer from IIT will be able to make it. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Right, let's see the way of that. What do they want? They want? Uh, they want a uh, chakki atta. This is our uh, private label atta. This is your brand? Yes. Uh, okay. Why did you all decide to do private labels? Uh, I mean your own label or own, private label uh, as they're called. Uh, for us, it was basically creating a new price point. So what is the difference, what would you say is the price difference between Chakki Atta, which yeah. is the Grofer's private yeah. label, yeah. and any other uh, brand of Atta in the shop? Yes, so for most products, hmm. uh, our private label would be anywhere between 20 to 40 percent cheaper than right. the brand that it competes with. Right. Yeah, so for uh, Chakki Atta, it's almost, uh, for a 10 kg pack, it's almost 70 rupees cheaper than what uh, branded Atta would be. Right, okay. So your guy has got two, two Chakki Atta's. Chucky Atta. yeah. So we now need to go to the next location. How many product categories do you have in your private label? Uh, we, we are in almost all the categories that we operate. Oh really? Yeah, so we have more than 1200 SKUs right. in our private label. Oh, okay. So sourcing and packaging and yeah. all of that is something else completely? Com yes. yes. Where does that happen? Uh, so Are they contract manufacturers? They're contract manufacturers for us. Yeah. So then what's the difference we, between you guys and Hindustan Unilever? We, we, <laughs> we, we are as much a CPG company as we are a retailer. Hmm. Or between you and the future group, Kishore Bayani's future group. Yeah, we, 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 are, we are just uh, building a lot more of, of this on the tech background. Right. right. So that's the real difference here, right? right. How do we take advantage of um, the inefficiency that exists in the supply chain? Right. So anything else on your... Yes, oh, okay. there is another product that we are going to... And what's the item? This is done. So I'll just... So yeah, this order is complete now. Not yeah. bad, Saurav. We managed, managed to, complete to complete the order. The order yes. But how, how did you do for time and is time of, is it of essence here when your team is actually fulfilling orders? Yes. Is there a time parameter that's important? Yes, we, we monitor like how much time it takes to pick every order. Right. So this is one of the performance metrics for the warehouse. It is? It is. Oh, okay. I, what I find interesting is that the warehouse is actually a visual representation of your uh, change in strategy where the company is concerned, isn't it? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, five years ago, we didn't think we would be running warehouses. We were guys with yeah. logistics yeah. background and we thought, yeah. you know, our livelihood is going to be more related to logistics, not as much yeah. to warehousing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the demands of the business were that this is a business we had to learn. Yeah. So we had to learn how to not only build warehouses, yeah. but also build the technology for them, yeah. learn how to manage inventory, work with brands, 
a lot of this stuff was uh, very new to us like four years ago when we actually started doing yeah. this. What happened that made you realize that what you were thinking was the business opportunity was not really the business opportunity yeah. but you had to change the model and uh, what did it take to come to a conclusion that you should change? Yeah, so uh, if we, I mean hindsight is mm. obviously always like 20-20 mm. that mm. you're always thinking yeah. about oh, we've, uh, we've figured out something now uh, mm. about why we did it mm. but at that time what we were struggling with was essentially a very core mm. supply chain problem which mm. was fill rates to our end customers so if our customers yeah. ordered 10 items yeah, yeah. and we picked up from the local store yeah. uh, we were only able to deliver seven mm. or eight mm. and that was not a good customer experience so we were losing customers because mm. people could not depend on the service so to solve that uh, predictability problem for the mm. customers uh, we started looking at okay can we actually like get into the supply chain mm. right uh, the opportunity over there which turned out to be mm. massive was that because the problems we were facing mm. were because of the lack of uh, supply chain. Yeah. So when we started investing in supply chain, mm. we just realized that, oh, this is actually a great opportunity. Right. Like we should be very bullish about yeah. investing more into the supply yeah. chain. Uh, and that's how we kind of ended up here. So that means that the growers that we saw advertised and when yeah. you know we got introduced to as yeah. customers right in the beginning was about a delivery service, was yeah. about convenience. Yeah. And the growers today is about a company that stocks these products itself, right? So it is still about convenience to the end customer. Yeah. I don't think the experience to the end customer changed beyond one major thing which was that we stopped uh, delivering express hmm. right hmm. so we were hmm. not doing hmm. like which, fast was, which was a sort of brand proposition and a point of distinction when you first started when we first right? started yeah, yeah. And it was a fairly i think it was about 25% yeah. of the business as yeah. well so uh, apart from like hmm. not doing express hmm. we uh, still mean the same thing to the customer hmm. of course hmm. the brand proposition kept getting more refined so the hmm. customer doesn't know that what yeah. what happens sure. in the background of right? course. for them it is still a partner yeah. that is delivering to yeah. them and, and that part we've been consistent on. Right. But the whole operation that you see here yeah. is meant to strengthen the back end of how that customer experience yeah. actually yeah. is yeah. good yeah. versus average. So what got you to this insight? What was the experience uh, that added up to this final conclusion? I think keeping our ear to the ground as to what our customers are actually saying. Mm. Right? So we are always looking at who are the customers that are most loyal to the platform and we're trying to do more and more of what makes people loyal. Building propositions that actually matter to the customer. Mm. And of course taking some hard choices also on like what you're not going to focus on. Mm. Right? That is equally essential. Right? Being able to say that we are not going to be yeah. about express delivery. Yeah. We are not going to do fresh. Yeah. But are you emotionally attached to what you've decided to do and you don't want to admit that it's wrong? Does that no, happen? No, of course. Uh, we actually admit that we were wrong. Mm. about like, mm. And that's kind of uh, the Did first thing survive? that we started it. That yeah. We said, look, we are wrong about this. So instead of taking mm. you know 500 people mm. and keep running in the wrong direction mm. it's better to say that you know we mm. we were wrong and we're going to change direction right. and that's exactly what we ended up doing mm. uh, so uh, logically they were not that hard mm. when you look at from the lens of the business mm. uh, when you look at from a personal lens they were very hard how, how do you mean uh, when you're asking people that you work with to basically say look you know we bought you in for a certain skill set but the direction that the business is going in doesn't yeah. need those skill sets anymore. yeah so letting uh, people go letting was people difficult. Go very, very difficult, right? Uh, because obviously, I hope that mm. whenever we hire people, we are hiring people who are passionate, who are sure. basically coming to yeah. join a journey yeah. that is relatively unpredictable. Yeah. But also because I think they make a real difference. Mm. Uh, we don't come from like huge mm. corporate families to be yeah. able to say that you know we can just have a division that runs yeah. X Y Z. Mm. We actually have to make. Uh, we have to build everything from the ground up and we have to get people who are passionate about it. Sometimes they come in uh, not at salaries that mm. they would get in the market. Uh, yeah. So those, the personal part of it is much harder. How much more inventory would you need to do to gear up for a sale? Give me a sense of before and after. We almost double our inventory just for the sale. Right. Uh, because it's usually 100% bump over our regular days yeah. that we see over a 9-10 day period. So 
we have to double up. So the same facilities take almost double the amount of inventory. Right. What is the role that this big sale performs for you guys? It is about customer acquisition or is it about a bump up in revenues at the start of a new year? What does it do? I think it's a little bit of both of those. Hmm. Uh, so we look, we do get a lot more new customers introduced. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do get a bump up in revenue. Hmm. Hmm. But I think the bigger objective for us is actually more around brand building because it's kind of an opportunity for us to tell a lot of people that don't hmm. know about Grofers or hmm. they have, haven't tried online hmm. grocery hmm. that you know this is kind of uh, this is an event this is a place where you can hmm. come you can actually save hmm. money and you can try us out during yeah. this period uh, and both the times the last time around we did it we saw like a massive jump in customer acquisition hmm. or more than 100% jump in customer acquisition hmm. this time we are hoping to introduce like a million new customers uh, to the platform just during the sale period. I was reading that I think the first sale you did, you had almost 100% cash back. Right. Um, that's changed this time around. I'm guessing people won't get 100% cash back. Uh, I think the first two sales, we did different versions of the cash back. Yeah. Uh, they were more staggered mm. uh, over like a one year period so that people have the yeah. incentive. And the reason we did it, we wanted people to try the platform out multiple times. Mm. We wanted them to try it out a few times so that mm. they get, get a feel for how yeah. we solve a lot of their problems. Uh, and now I think the sale is becoming more and more about actually we have a lot more confidence that you know people actually like our proposition. Mm. There's a big enough mm. word of mouth out there that we can actually mm. sort of tell our right. customers. So now the proposition is more around sort of incentivizing people to try out try us out just one time mm. and see sort of how it works out. So now it's more about like guaranteed enough and a lottery and people can win motorcycles Prizes and cars. Prizes and, and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. this is all marketing. This, this is all marketing. This event is marketing, yes. about yes. marketing grofers. Yes. So Saurabh, where does the load land up? I mean, you, you know, so you've, I heard that you've doubled um, the kind of stock you'd be uh, keeping here. Now, where else is the pressure when a sale is on? Uh, for us, it's throughout the supply chain, right? We are buying a lot more inventory. Yeah. Uh, we even to process orders. So we yeah. have hired 2,000 more people mm. to manage loads oh, during this period. Right. Uh, so This is all contract labor? This is contract yeah. labor for us, right? So for us, uh, the entire supply chain has to ramp up mm. for sale, right? Mm. Uh, because as Alvi said, like, we are expecting to double our order volumes from previous month. Mm. So uh, in those 10 days, we are, uh, we, we are processing what close to about 10 crore items in those 10 days alone. Right. Right? So for that, we have to gear up the entire infrastructure, right? Mm. The entire supply chain has to gear up for it. And what about the user interface? Is there is there pressure at that on uh, at that end as well? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think last year what we saw uh, in the August sale, mm. uh, we were getting about twenty five thousand requests mm. per second mm. on our platform. Okay. Uh, which we are expecting this time around. What we are testing the loads for is close to sixty to seventy thousand on average. Uh, so that obviously that entire infrastructure gets stretched yeah. uh, but the good thing is it's for a short period of time it's for yeah. 10 days so what are the stress points are you guys nervous about anything when a big sale is coming up or is around the corner I think we're nervous about pretty much everything when the big sale is coming what is an unforeseen thing that has happened in the past in August our biggest unforeseen I think was the rains in Bombay mm. so it started raining in Bombay yeah, yeah, and yeah. the streets got flooded yeah. and then we had a pile up of orders on yeah. one day because then you're forced to reschedule yeah. them for the next day and that has a chain reaction throughout yeah. the entire supply chain. Uh, I think recently like a lot of the disturbances uh, in the cities they were also yeah. kind of like unforeseen yeah. events. Yeah. So that's kind of what like keeps us awake. Yeah. You know you don't want to be blindsided by yeah. one of those things. Yeah. Uh, I you think. know, I, in fact, I'm uh, really interesting that you alluded to it. These internet shutdowns that we've been experiencing because of security reasons uh, ever since these protests broke out in the national capital region and, you know, in UP. How has internet shutdowns affected you guys? Actually, not that much because, the, uh, I mean, over a over long enough time mm. period, like, they don't really impact us mm. that much yet. Uh, but, of course, mm. like, uh, when uh, a couple of times these disturbances happened, mm. Uh, you know, for us, the internet goes down like like you saw the entire supply chain actually for us functions on yeah. internet, yeah. like like the order picking yeah. and packing and then the dispatch, mm. the 5,000 store partners yeah. that we have, all of them actually yeah. the only way they interact with us is yeah. actually through the internet. So I think in a way like internet has become a very core part of 
a lot of the businesses, right? Maybe not for some of the older generation of yeah. businesses, but, but for, for businesses, guys, right? Yeah. It's kind of become very, very essential. Yeah. So they do have an impact in sort of the everyday function. Are you surprised by how frequently it seems to be put off these days? Not as yet. I think, I mean, it has not really been kind of a, a big concern yeah. so far. Yeah. But hopefully, like, it doesn't get, you know, to the point where it becomes a concern for us. How important is profitability at this point of time in the growers' journey? I think uh, profitability is always having a path to get to it mm. has always been important mm. and it has been important over the last three years so that's mm. nothing something that is new for us. Mm. Uh, what is much more important for us to kind of stick to a plan, mm. deliver to that plan and have the ability and the resources to be able to deliver to that mm. plan. And that's something that we've been very consistent about and our investor base has also been very consistent about. Uh, we don't really worry that much about the ecosystem because mm. the ecosystem is very reactive to even yeah. small changes. Uh, but that shouldn't change the way that you do your business. Mm. Right? The fundamentals of business don't change based on the environment. Mm. You're still trying to grow the business. You're still trying to get it to sustainability. Mm. Uh, you still have a long-term vision. You might have to uh, change your plans a little bit based on sort of sure. what the, maybe the funding environment yeah. is. But those are uh, What is the funding the environment now? We are at the start of not just a new year, but a new decade. So how would you describe the funding? We don't yet. <laughs> uh, we will hopefully find out soon so, how it is. Mm. Uh, I think uh, last year when we raised capital in the beginning of the year, yeah. uh, obviously like, you know, uh, things were uh, yeah. a lot more, uh, you know, sunny. Mm. Uh, they might not be right now. Yeah. Uh, but I think that doesn't necessarily change the way we view our business or the way that we view mm. what we need to accomplish. Mm. Sara, we're going to leave you with the last words. They better be very wise. <laughs> both first generation entrepreneurs anything that you would say in 2020 to somebody wanting to get into business and a tech tech based business i think getting started is the first thing just get started <laughs> just get started right and you figure you you figure problems all along the way you have to get started that's the most important thing okay just get started i've been there sort of lovely mm -hmm. talking to you i wish you both a great deal of luck thank yeah. you yeah. so much thank you so have much. a great new year <laughs> thank you. all right thank you